Depending on when you're watching this vid, it may or may not be coming up to Halloween. And this year I want to carve a pumpkin, but I don't want to get messy, so I'm going to do it digitally. Not a spooky one like last time because, well, the tree feathers are falling and I have that warm autumn glow, so I want to try to make a cute pumpkin. So here's the steps to how do thing. So first off, grab yourself a sphere, and if you're a minimalist, job done. Grab yourself a cover, you deserve it. For the rest of us, we can quickly form the shape using the radial symmetry. For that, go to transform, activate symmetry, select your axis and how many radial counts you need. This will allow you to sculpt all around your model at the same time with multiple brushes. So for this, I mostly use the clay buildup, the move and the dam standard. And to make those creases extra tight, I use the inflate brush for each segment, which kind of inflates them and pushes those uh, creases together. And keeping the radial symmetry on, you can use the move brush to get the shape that you want, which is a little bit of a sag around the bottom to show where gravity has affected growing. I've also added a slight twist to mine as well. Next, we want to mask and then extract the pumpkin uh, butt hole, I guess, the bit at the bottom. And we can do this by going to the bottom of the subtool menu to extract, setting the thickness and then hitting accept when you're happy with it. Dynamesh it and clean it up. And now we can add the stalk. This time we're going to append a cylinder and sculpt that cylinder with the radial symmetry, just like we did the pumpkin. And once you're happy with the sculpt, we can bend that stalk into shape using the bend curve. To get that, if you go to move and then on the gizmo, go to the settings, you will find a handy function called bend curve. Now there's a lot of settings to this, but the main one is the resolution at the top. This will add extra points for which you can use to manipulate this mesh around. I recommend starting with just three at first and then adding more as you get more of a detailed shape. So I felt like this stalk was too long, so I gave it a bit of a brutal circumcision with the clip curve brush, a very handy brush. Now we can move on to the fun part, and that's putting the face on this cute little fella. But there's a lot of options, it would be good to save this out and make multiple versions, but I like the big eyes and small mouth. But I want to make him smiley, so I'm going to add a bit of a squint to the eyes as well. So once you've masked this out, you can invert the mask, use the move tool to pull it in slightly. We're not going to make this pumpkin hollow, we just want to kind of have an indentation and then some glowy eyes. So then all we need to do is smooth those edges out and neaten it up. So I've used pinch brush on the edges to make it look nice and sharp. And I've also used the damp standard on the inside, make it look like it's got a little bit of thickness. Same thing with the mouth, but not as deep because this is just going to be kind of a softer glow. So we need to make a lower poly version of our models. Duplicate your mesh. And on the duplication, we can use Z remesh. Now this might not come out nice straight away. So you might have to use the Z remesher guides to nudge Z remesher in the right direction. Now this won't give you a great mesh, but it is fast and it's great if you're doing a quick project like this. With the new mesh, we need to regain that sculpted detail. So to do that, make sure only those two meshes are visible. Go to project under subtool and hit project. Subdivide your new low poly and project again. And you might get little errors. To fix those, you can use a Z project brush to project them manually. Keep doing that until you regain your detail. Next, I'm gonna add two little cheek pads for maximum cuteness. And the same again, I'm gonna use the mask out and extraction method for that. At this point, we should also remesh all the other items we've made so far so they're ready to go. And it's at this point that I decide that as this is gonna be a standalone image, it would be nice if it was more of a little diorama or scene. So I'm gonna add a few more elements. Using the same techniques with a bend curve on a cylinder, I create a nice vine that curves around that I can duplicate to make the background look a bit more interesting. And then I'm gonna just mask out a leaf shape on a box, extract that, and then bend and sculpt that into a leafy shape. This leaf is actually gonna be a single plane using like a more of a game method. The same as in my other foliage tutorials. So with all this finished and a low and high poly version made of each one, I can export them separately and bring them into the 3D editing software of my choice, which in this case is Maya. So with both the high and low poly imported and sitting on top of each other perfectly, I'm going to put them each into their own layers. And the first step of the more boring technical bit is to make the low poly leaf, which is just going to be a single plane. And then I'm going to add a few subdivisions and just try to get this to line up as perfectly as I can inside that leaf. With that done, I can add it to my low poly and then select all the low polys and unwrap them. Now, most people find unwrapping tedious at first, but actually once you get used to it, it's quite an enjoyable part of the process. So you just want to put your seams in somewhere where they'll be less likely to be seen. So in this case, it's around the back of the pumpkin. I'm going to cut the bottom off and, and then I'm going to try and put the rest of the seams down the creases of the pumpkin. Now, the main thing you want to try to do here is to align them either horizontal or vertically. If you've got a texture running across something, make sure it's going in the same direction on all those uh, pieces that show that texture. So like wood grain, for example, you don't want it all over. 
over the place. Next, we want to select both the high and low poly and move everything away from each other so nothing is touching, ready for baking. And I'm also going to add some vertex color to the high poly so that I can make an ID map. Once done, save your low poly and high poly out separately as FBXs. We can now give this cute little fella a lick of paint in Substance Painter. So we want it to be PBR, select our low poly mesh and set the document resolution to 2K. Once you've checked that all your UVs are correct, we can bake our mesh maps. For this, I'm gonna set the output size to eight by eight, load in my high poly mesh into the high poly slot, set anti-aliasing to eight by eight, and I'll also set the ID map to vertex color. Once you've done that, we can bake and check that all our detail has been captured onto our low poly mesh. And to make this a little bit more interesting, I'll save out a second vertex version of the low poly mesh nicely posed and to swap out that we just go to project configuration and load in the new mesh and bam we've got a nice little layout to start painting on to keep your texturing organized you should make a folder for each different texture so for me it's pumpkin it's wood and it's leaf my process for this is really simple. I'm gonna put a base layer into each one of them folders. That's the color of the item. Then I'm gonna put another layer on top of that that has a little bit of texture. I've got some nice paint strokes here. And then eventually I will also have a cavity layer and an edge highlight layer for each different texture. I've also added a couple of gradients to the pumpkin itself so that it's not just a flat color from top to bottom and the same for the wood as well. Now here's where the process differs a little from the usual. I'm actually going to save out those textures as are, open up the base color in Photoshop and use the base color as a guide to add some nice painterly strokes, which I find much easier to do in Photoshop, being careful of the seams. Once done, save it out, drag it back into Substance Painter, and then you can create a new layer, say in the pumpkin, drag that in as a fill for an effective way to add some nice painterly details. On top of this, I'll make a new paint layer, and then using a nice paintbrush, I recommend typing in paint into the brushes and using one of the Kyle brushes. I'm going to color pick from different parts of the mesh and fill out some extra layers of detail. Then I'll add a darker material on top and use the smart masks to put that just in the cavities to make them stand out a little bit more. And now I can add an, a layer set to just emissive and start painting in the glowing of the eyes. So I'm gonna do that pretty solid at first and then I'm gonna go around the edges with a softer brush to add a little bit of glowy transition. And we can even preview the emissive within Substance Painter. All we need to do is activate post effects in display settings and also increase the emissive intensity in shader settings. And to finish it off and bring it all together, I'm going to add a bait lighting and a color correction over the top of everything. Then we can export those textures as PBR and we can do the final stage, which is to render this out and make it a pretty little scene. I've chosen to use Marmoset and I'll not go into a ton of detail here, but basically you want to set up your material with your new textures, drop your model in there, and then you want a shadow capture for the floor. You want to click on the sky and pick a nice HDRI map and there's lots to choose from. And then you want say a few lights, maybe three lights, a key light, a fill light and a rim light. And then in render settings, you want to use ray tracing. And I recommend going through all the settings and render settings and in your camera settings and messing around with every single one and kind of just figuring out what they do by trying and error. I've also added a couple of lights to the front of the eyes to help aid with the glowy feeling coming from them. But tragedy strikes. Like all good Halloween stories, there was a spooky twist. Somehow I lost the cheeks. They disappeared like ghosts into the night. But luckily I could go back and get them and I had some space on my UV map. So it wasn't too difficult to unwrap them, pop them into Substance Painter, texture them and get them onto the UV map and back into Marmoset for the final render. So here it is, the final render. Hopefully this has inspired some of you to go out and make your own. And if you want to see more, then, uh, then like or uh, the pumpkin is gonna come get you.